Hi everyone, we're here at John Charles Auto Care. And we have a customer complaint, they have their brakes fixed by Firestone Complete Auto Care. And they're complaining about the pedal doesn't feel right, there's a scraping kind of a sound, and that's a sign of generic brake pads. I drove the vehicle myself, I verified the complaint, and now I'll show you what I found out. We have a dial indicator hooked up to the brake rotor here. And it's supposed to have no more than three thousandths of an inch of a lateral run out. And so we'll see what we got here. So you always want to go around a couple of times to make sure it's true. So we just got over, over one thousandth of an inch run out. So that part of it's okay. And then what we'll do next is we'll open it up inside of here and look at the pad itself. Okay, let's see. So it has two bolts here on the caliper. And they are on super, super tight. They're supposed to be 27 foot pounds. That's like 50. Same thing with that one. Then once we remove those, then the whole caliper itself will lift off. We'll slide that off and we'll look inside of there. There's quite a bit of debris and dust in there. Looks like they use some kind of anti-squealing stuff on there. This kind of stuff that's on here. Okay, we'll set that up there, out of the way. The first thing I know is right away, if you look at the factory manual from Honda, the inboard pad, which is the one we're gonna look at, it's got what's called a wear indicator at the top of the rotor. So here's the brake caliper, here's the bleeder screw, it's at the top. So this would be the inboard pad. Um, install the inner pad with its wear indicator upward. So we're going to look at this vehicle. This is the inboard brake pad. This is the wear indicator. It's on the bottom. It's in the wrong place. Um, you can just see the different kinds of material in there. Something shiny was in there. Or if that's the material of itself, I don't know what that is. Um, so that's not in properly. The upward one, it doesn't say how it's supposed to be. You know, there's no wear indicator on it. Then you have these guide pins. And they're supposed to move freely. And they're not moving very freely. So, you're supposed to have break, uh, black synthetic grease in there. It has it in there, but it's old. It hasn't been taken apart in years. The top one has a little bushing on it. And this one... We're going to have to use a pair of pliers to get out. And you shouldn't have to do this. It should come out by hand. That's really bad. So what this is allowing to happen is the brakes to stay on all the time. When you push on the brake pedal, this piston inside of here, this piece here, pushes the inboard pad. And the way these guide pins are set up, it pulls the outer pad in. Well, what's happening is the outer pad's staying on all the time because of this. So this is all dried up and really poor condition. So, uh, I got new hardware for this also because you can see that's in terrible shape also. And it shows you the little bushing caliper pin and there's a little bushing on it. So, you wonder why people are having problems, people are complaining. Well, the brake pads are staying on all the time. It's getting hot. That's why the discoloration in the face of the rotor. And it's not stopping good. It's making noise because it's a generic pad. So the pads are in wrong. The wear indicator is supposed to be at the top. It's on the bottom. There's no lubrication on the guide pins. So the brakes are staying stuck on all the time a little bit, which hurts gas mileage, makes the brake fade, makes the brake fluid get too hot. Maybe that explains why the brake fluid's no good. 
So we'll have to take a look and see how the rear ones look, but this is just a left front wheel and uh, they didn't do a good job at all. This is not um, the kind of work you expect to see from an ASE certified repair facility. Okay, thank you very much everybody. I'll keep you posted on the rear brakes. Bye.